Right, so welcome back to Project Pede. I just taken the delivery of the shock, which means I need to put the shock on the car. So the last video, part one of this uh, A45S, if you guys haven't seen that, where I was struggling to start the car, click up there, watch that video. Uh, but today I will be trying to replace this shock, swap the shock over, and hopefully by the end of today, I'll be able to move this car inside the unit and do a thorough inspection on the ramp. So this should be pretty quick, probably an hour or two job. That's what I said last time as well, but uh, let's hope that's not the case. And with that being said, let's begin. Right, so this is the replacement shock that I got from Mercedes. And believe it or not, this was cheaper to buy directly from Mercedes than buy it online. So this one set me back a solid 170 plus VAT. Uh, and online, the cheapest one I could find was over 350 pounds. So yeah, these are the adaptive suspension and the electrical connector goes into the top there. So through there. But yeah, so this one uh, will be sitting under here three bolts here we are gonna remove the brace or loosen that one flip that back and then drop the shock so this electrical connector goes into the top of the shock and then you can electronically uh, adjust the dampening from the inside of the car so yeah let's quickly remove the wheel and start removing some parts and get this one fitted so I have my special gloves on and the adapter to remove the center cap thing. Right, so and now let's jack the car up. So I have left the uh, jack in the same place and it's already on the jacking pads, yep. So that's making good contact. How much is enough? A bit more and a tiny bit more. I think that'll do. Right now, 17 mil. There we go. Let's set that aside. Oh, I mean, look. The wheel is brand new from the inside. So let's just hammer this straight and put it back on. <laughs> oh, if only that was the case. That's like 1600 pounds, something for the wheel. Anyways, right, so what we need to do now is disconnect the drop link and then the bolt over there we need to get the spreader tool and also the top first thing to remove is the drop link so oh boy that is solid so what i'm going to do is i will use the little preservation device which is this There you go. Easy. Easy peasy. Of course that's not gonna go back because there's still tension and stuff on there. Um right. We might have to remove it from there from the bottom. So the next bolt to come out is this one there. Don't know if you guys can see it, but and that one clamps down on the shock and holds it in place so i don't know what size yeah all oh, perfect so that is e18 and i think we can use the impact on that one anyway 
sure. But before that, let's see if we can just crack it loose. Yeah. There we go. So that is. Oh, you can see it just put that back on so we don't lose it. Leave that there. And now we need we need to turn the wheel so we can access the back of this and use a spreader tool to spread the knuckle. So now we'll get the spreader tool. This one I made in house, but you can buy some online. And let's just move that aside there. Put this in there and then we need a socket. So if we put that through there, like that and then use okay. there you go so that should give us technically oh it doesn't because the shock is bent we'll need to persuade it with a hammer slightly so time to use little persuasion I don't know how, I think if I put it there, I can't get a good angle like this because we have we might have to remove this bracket as well. So. All of these, yeah, eaten. Eaten. Happy days. Right. Um, right. Disconnect all of these from here, from there, and then slide this out. Right, now we should be able to give it a good hit. The thing is I don't want to damage. Uh, that is disconnected. This is going to be a little... Ooh, I think the drive shaft is gone as well. Mm, that is not good. Hopefully not. But it looks a bit too bent here. Um, right. Let's remove the spreader tool and put it in a different location. Um, let's put it at the top and see if that helps in there.
Well, <laughs> clearly. It's been in a flipping accident, so. Um, I need to twist that slightly. I think we might be onto something here now. Come on. Ooh. Is it moving? Yes. So we have movement. It's got a long way to go, but and to grab another spreader, perhaps. All right, let's remove it from the top, but then again, still not going to come out because of that I don't want to be moving the lower control on for that all of this so right uh, situation Right, so that is the truck rod and disconnected. Now we can what's hitting. Oh this the drop link. Should we remove or loosen the drive shaft. I think it'll be a good shot, you know. And oh, there we go. That's better. So last is there. And now we can rotate. Right, hmm. I mean, we need to put something bigger through there. Right, so I have disconnected all the control arms and everything, and time to remove the drive shaft. But it's about to start raining, so I might have to. Uh, Stop this in a minute. Come on, what size is it? There we go. And let's remove the drive shaft. Half the days. Not usually if we you know what let's thread this in slightly and then There you go. So the drive shaft is come on. Yeah. There we go. We have the drive shaft disconnected as well. So basically everything is free. If I disconnect the caliper, then I can just take the whole thing down and deal with it inside. Uh, and then I don't have to stay out in the rain. So what I'm going to do is remove the caliper. Too big. Perfect. Right, let's quickly. I've done this before, but I wasn't planning of removing the whole axle. So, uh, here, 
well this would be a good time to change the discs and the discs are not too bad but the pads so I might as well get them ordered because everything's off anyway so and now we can use this to quickly I want to grab the bungee cord but the thing is we cannot use the bungee cord to strap it down somewhere can we nope so what we need to do is i need to leave it on top of something uh, so we'll use this so it doesn't get scratched Oh boy, now let's spread this quickly and then we should be able to get enough. There we go, yeah. Come on, there we go. Oh, I need to disconnect the... I forgot to disconnect the ABS sensor. Oh, happy days. It's easy anyway from here. This is difficult. There we go. Happy days. Right now we can move this aside there and leave this covered up back. Here. We'll just leave it on top of. Uh, oh, perfect. So that can just sit there for now. We'll leave these tools there. Let's take everything else inside. Take this off, which is what size is that? Quickly, really, really, really. Oh, it's E. There we go. Now, one, two, and then we need to hold. Oh, that's going to be heavy. Where is it? That's the hole. Should just come up. difficult let's leave that there I'm literally out of breath this is heavy but yeah finally it's out as you can see and look at the state of it it's completely bent so now I need to spread the knuckle and remove that one transfer the spring and the top mount to the new uh, shock absorber and then that'll be going back in and hopefully we'll uh, attach it back to the car and uh, yeah but that's how it looks that is crazy all right let's try to take this off so i need to spread this let's just use this and then That is proper in there, isn't it? Yes. Oh, that is out. Now look at the state of this. 
<laughs> oh boy. The rest of the hub and everything looks pretty good. So we want to clear all of that, make sure you move that metal from the magnet so it doesn't affect our ABS speed signals. Uh, but yeah, time to quickly go across, swap the spring over to the new one. And then we can, I mean, I can, I can probably swap it over here. I don't need the big hydraulic press for this. Right, so the shock, the spring has been transferred over to the shock and you can see the difference in the shocks. That's how it's supposed to look and that's how it looks after the impact. But yeah, time to put this back in the carrier and then put this back on the car. So yeah, let's continue. Almost done, almost done. Right, so I have finally swapped over the top mount and the spring from the old shock to the new one. And it's time to put everything back together. So it's going to go back on the hub and then it's going to go back on the car. So I'm almost there, almost there. It's a bit more work and then we can put everything back together and hopefully uh, move the car inside the garage. Let's go. Right, so last night it got really nasty. The weather got really wet and got really dark. So I had to quickly crack on, change the suspension and get the car inside. But I have managed to get the car inside, it's inside the unit, and now it's time to put it up on the ramp so we can do a full proper inspection uh, as to what is actually happening underneath the car. Uh, that was pretty difficult. I've also got another delivery from Mercedes uh, for the wiper arm that was stolen at Copart. Uh, so we need to put that one on. And yeah, so my aim for the day would be to just get the car up and inspect it and then we'll take it from there. So today should be a rather chill day and maybe I'll start removing some airbags and uh, get it prepped for the replacement dash and everything. So let's go. The thing I forgot to mention is that's the wheel from the front. So what I have done is I remove that wheel from the passenger side rear. Uh, so I can drive the car, well, put it back and forth. And I did have a spare wheel. I tried putting this wheel on the front, but it would not fit due to the ET of this wheel is slightly different. Uh, but I managed to fit that on the back and swap that wheel for the front so we can move the car. I still need to source the wheels, which are, Mercedes are asking like nearly £3,700 for two wheels. So it's a bit of a, yeah, steep price obviously we need two of those wheels and then we are good to go pretty much so yeah i thought i quickly mention that and the shock i don't even know where the shock is the shock is in here that is the state of the shock look at that that is yep that is shot so yeah let me take the car out reverse it in and then we will be able to inspect this. Let's go. Right, so the car is on the ramp and first thing we're looking at is the front. So this part, I believe that's the oil cooler. Mm, the bracket don't really look snapped, so I think it's just come out of its place. So I should be able to clip that one back in. I don't need to get a new bracket. That's just a little seal. So to stop, to uh, divert the air through the cooler itself. Obviously this one needs a lot of cleaning because there's a lot of leaves and stuff in there. Um, this side, same, looks pretty good. No pipes, nothing is punctured or broken. Uh, this side looks pretty good as well. I don't need to jet wash this radiator because it's full of mud and stuff down there. Apart from that, we need to get a new splash guard. That one is slightly cracked at the back and I might as well just replace it. 
Uh, so we'll get the front and the rear section of the inner splash guard. And looking underneath the car, it is a lot better than I was expecting. So the control arm has slight marks. I think this is overexposing. That's better, I think. Focus. So as you can see, there's light contact points on the control arm, but nothing major. The measurements is the same and it doesn't look bent or anything. Obviously, we'll find out when we put it through to tracking wheel alignment. Um, and also, I need to, if you look at that little bracket over there, the metal bracket, we need to get, oh, I think I might even be able to straighten that up. So that's for the front leveling sensor, which sits back there. And then the other side, as you can see, just clips into the arm control arm like that. Uh, this part, which diverts air into the disc, I still have that undamaged. That's at the back. Um, and the drive shaft and everything else looks pretty good. So there are no other contact areas and points at the front here. It made a little contact here, but there's nothing is bent or anything. Just scrape this plastic. Uh, oh, is it plastic or metal? Oh, it's metal. So you can see light scratches on there, but nothing major. Obviously, I will remove that and ins inspect that underneath properly. Uh, so, so far, so good. I'm glad this is not broken, or the pipes, because that is really expensive. Yeah, that cooler is expensive. We replaced one on a C63 not long ago, and that was quite pricey. So, some spiders living in there. Apart from that, this side, no issues. And again, no marks, nothing there. The disc needs a bit, that should come off with the driving. So a bit rusty, because it's been sitting there for some time. And that's the spare wheel that I put on. At the back here, there is nothing that I can see. This side is rather good. Even on this side, you can see the little mark here uh, on the plastic. But apart from that, there's nothing major. Obviously, I will need to be getting this tray. So it's not terrible, but there's a little tab that comes down and holds that in place. So I'll just order the entire new tray. Um, and this uh, little brace protected the fuel tank from bursting. So can you see the contact there? Um, so I might be able to even straighten this up because that's not really, uh, well, it's essential, but not that essential. So I might be able to just hammer this down or we can even get replacement shouldn't really be an issue apart from that there is nothing out of place uh, that I can see from here so we are really really lucky on this occasion obviously the wheel will have to be replaced and I think this is going to be one of the most expensive part on the entire job so Right, so there you have it guys. Um, we haven't really got any damage. I was hoping the front oil cooler and the pipes and stuff are okay and they are, because that saves me a lot of money. In terms of, the mo I think the most expensive part on the entire build on this one would be the wheels, which are nearly four grand, so about 3,700. Uh, unless I can find some secondhand ones, used ones somewhere but they're really difficult to get hold of. So these are the forged wheels. Um, but anyways, apart from that, all the rest of the stuff has been pretty minimal. Uh, the only thing I had to change is the shock absorber. And obviously we'll need to put it through wheel alignment tracking, the headline needs to be sorted, the front bumpers and all the rest of the stuff. But all the major stuffs are done. And for now, I'm just gonna leave it here. I'm just gonna start ordering more parts like the inner splash guards and a few other bits. So that would be it for this video. Uh, tune in next time to watch probably the airbags. So probably in the next one we'll uh, start working on the airbag and start getting that sorted. Uh, there'll be a dedicated video for the front end, getting that, putting it back together. And yeah, so thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure to tune in next time. Um, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and we shall see you next time.